Also, don't forget, you have STs to take in my subject tomorrow. The Friday is scheduled for oral com. Uh, no, no, for research. Research is to be taken at 9.45 to 10.45 on a Friday. On Saturday, yes, Mark? If you end up having a mistake in a test, then mistakes are points of learning. They are, they are. ST in oral com Lorraine is at 10.45 to 11.45 on a Saturday. Let me repeat that. Don't worry, I'll also po I'll share to Rain and to Leija the schedule that I have made for my STs so that they can also have that schedule shared to you. So you'll be reminded of the day when my STs are to be taken. I bet. No, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. No big deal. No big deal. So for now, Mark, if, Mark, if you don't mind, I'll put you on mute so that we can proceed with the discussion. Anyway, for the rest of the questions in the ST, we'll deal with, that, with them by the time the discussion is done. Let's have this continuation going with this slide. I don't know, before we go to... Oh, wait. Let's give it a few seconds. Google Meet is still loading up. Let's give it a few seconds. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Once again, we have this slide that is with a question that holds the question, why is there a need to philosophize? We are reminded by Plato that our natural curiosity drives us to develop that sense of wonder. It's just this natural tendency for us to ask and to try to point for some rationalizations. Our curiosity wants to be satisfied. And so we wonder of the many things around us. Rene Descartes has his share. We philosophize because there is a possible moment where we try to reject or question ideas that we encounter, creating some form of doubt. That doubt is not to be seen negatively all the while. That doubt is what leads into our attempt to understand why things happen, to understand why something is true and why something could probably be untrue. That's Rene Descartes' contribution or reason on philosophizing. Carl Jaspers, this modern philosopher, contemporary philosopher said, we philosophize because there are situations that limit us. Experiences, these experiences that we have, kind of tell us of our limitations. For instance, I think I made mention last time of a couple, a married couple, that their being married to each other sets a limit of them of each of them, not anymore to be involved with sexual relations with other people because their experience says that they are already married to each other. Lastly, according to Socrates, we, not, we, we philosophize because we have that innate characteristic of love for wisdom, the insatiable desire for truth. We may know some knowledge at one point, but at some degree, we can't be easily satisfied. And so we crave for more. We try to supplement what we know. For instance, why does it rain? Because of the, of the hydrologic cycle, of the water cycle. But to some, that's not enough. Why? What's the idea behind the hydrologic cycle? Oh, what is this process all about? Oh, so that process is there. What happens in this process? So we continue delving into the, we go, we continue digging into the depths of fully understanding the water cycle or the hydrologic process because of our insatiable desire. We were already informed of one reason, but that reason wasn't fully satisfying. We decided to go into the depths of knowing the specifics of that reason. 
which even led to fully understanding the process, going into more details or specifics. Socrates has told us of that. In the context of doing philosophy, we are also given the information of doing holistic thinking or partial thinking. Holistic thinking refers to a perspective in a large scale or a large scale patterns and systems. This is looking at something in the bigger picture. You look at something in the bigger picture, like when you make a decision, look at it in its bigger picture. Like, I will stop going to school now. Look at it. Look at that decision in what, in terms of what it can do to you as a full or as a total person. Of course, besides going at it in the bigger picture, you might want to also look at it in as in the aspects of the situation. That's what partial thinking tries to to convey. That's what partial thinking is telling us. We look at the partial view, and that view is what's important, an important component that is created by the situation. Going back into the decision of, I will not go to school this year. Holistic thinking, what can it do to me as a person? What will, what will happen to me as a person if I decide to stop schooling this year? Partial thinking, if I decide to, if I decide to stop schooling this year, what good am I as a child to my parents then at home? What will my purpose what will my purpose be just at home if I'm just going to stay at home? What will happen to my life as a student? What will happen to my records? What will happen to my learning? Look at the many aspects that I'm going to I'm trying to enumerate. These are the many aspects that we are crafting as views or partial views or components of the totality which is under holistic thinking. The totality, again, is under holistic thinking, aspects of that entire totality that is partial thinking. Philosophy tries to also branch into that. And then, let's consider this. We do philosophy for what use? For what purpose? Here are the common practical uses of philosophy in our lives. Actually, these are just a few of the many uses of philosophy. First, philosophy would enable us to engage in critical analysis in order for us to interpret concepts, definitions, arguments, and problems. Philosophy is not necessarily suggestive of overthinking. When we philosophize, we are not necessarily overthinking things. We are not over-rationalizing. But philosophy invites critical analysis, which is really necessary when we try to interpret situations. When we further interpret and understand situations, a critical mind is a requirement. Second, we do philosophy because it helps improve our problem-solving and decision-making. In the many things that we do at home and in school for as long as we continue breathing, we make decisions. We meet problems and we try to solve them. Our encounter in the many, in the many things that we encounter in life would invite us to solve issues and concerns and problems and deal with them. And dealing with them involves making decisions. Philosophy tries to assist us on that. And how can philosophy do that again? we bring ourselves back to purpose number one or use number one. Since philosophy develops critical thinking or critical analysis, we can then arrive at better decisions to make to deal with problems or to solve them. Wait. Next, use. A philosopher is also a good communicator who can clearly and adequately present who clear? Oh my God, this is grammatically incorrect. Please pardon the grammatical error. Wait. Uh, wait. Let's. Well, it can be edited. Let's edit. <laughs> Where is it? Okay. Let's edit. It can still be edited. Can you see the editing that I'm doing? Oh my God. <laughs> Tada! A philosopher is a good communicator who can clearly and adequately present 
his or her ideas who can present what is that we can base verb philosophy helps create good communication skills communication skills would even involve your ability to know what to say i've mentioned this in oral com philosophy would create good communication skills that would also allow you to know what to say and how to say that idea philosophy helps you could analyze the situation see i could men i would mention analysis once again you could analyze the situation should i say this with a joyous joyful tone of the voice or should i change the tone of my voice given that this is the situation is this the right set of words that i should use to deliver this idea again that's not overthinking that's being critical and especially in the field of communication we have to be to exercise caution and care with the words that we say and how we deliver these words to others in doing so a person becomes a good communicator last use that we have in this slide wisdom is one intended product of philosophizing and this refers to the person's ability to be able to apply knowledge in his or her daily life particularly in making sound choices and judgment a person's exercise of philosophy helps eventually the development of wisdom as that practice of philosophy invites the application of knowledge in one's own life knowledge is just surrounding us there's just so much to know in this world the challenge is how do we put them into practice the moment we manage to do that it can be it can be said that you have now exercised wisdom as well there's a, there's a form of wisdom in what you did because you managed to put into practice what you have come to learn around you and take note in your practice of wisdom in the, at the time that you have exhibited wisdom that's kind of tantamount into saying that you are making sound choices and valued judgment as well that concludes the discussion there do we have any question with a lesson on doing philosophy mark do we have a question sorry sorry mark what is it again what does philosophy look like how does philosophy look like is that your question mark is that it okay. so the question of mark is how does philosophy look like or what does it look like philosophy doesn't take a concrete or tangible form but actually philosophy is a way of life it's a particular it's a particular activity it's a particular practice or behavior or conditioning that people try to manifest in their day-to-day -day lives the moment you wake up in the morning and when you try to proceed into reasoning should i already rise from bed or should i still spend a few minutes lying down before i i, I before i stand up that is already philosophy at work in you or Again, Mark, philosophy doesn't have anything tangible. Meaning, you can touch philosophy. You can taste it. But you can practice it. Did you not hear what I said earlier? Sorry, sorry. Audio problems. Again, Philosophy has no tangible form. Yes, meaning it has no form where you could really touch and feel it. It's not like a pen. But the people who made this 
embraced philosophy. Why? They thought of what should we make in order to assist the skill in writing. In order for people to have something that could be read when they write something down. So they invented a pen. The making of a phone. When people make a phone, there is an incorporation of philosophy there. Why is it, uh, what is it that we can make for people to be able to reach each other out given longer distances and that they don't have to be lined all the time? When I say lined, they don't have to be bound on a line. They can go wherever they want and talk to someone over a particular device. They created a mobile phone. When they created an alcohol, this is a product of philosophy. So philosophy can be practiced, but it does not have an immediately available, tangible, or concrete material that you could touch. It's rather something that can be practiced by people. You could touch, though, the products of philosophy, but philosophy itself is an, asp is an abstract concept. It's rather something that we practice or we imbibe. We make that a part of our lives. Does that answer your question, Mark? Hello. Internet connection problems? Yes? Sorry, sorry. The connection mark is choppy. I'm having a problem getting your statement because your chop your connection is choppy. Any other question? A person, definitely, because the word suggests of someone. A philosopher is someone who has practiced strongly in his or her life the act of, or the, the the concept of philosophy and that's it for our first module questions other questions again again sorry sorry what is it Conrad, Conrad, uh, sorry, sorry, what was that? What was that? About the about the what? The sorry, but it I'm not really capturing the right words. What was it? About the politics about politics? I okay. Wait, politics did, I mean, politics is another abstract concept, but if I am not mistaken, I didn't mention of anything regarding politics from Tuesday until now. Correct me, the rest of the students, I think I didn't mention anything. But to, to answer the concern of Mark, politics is another abstract concept, just like Philosophy. Questions? By the way, I'd like to inform once again everybody that I would not want you to be surprised if your module doesn't contain questions to answer. And I think you find that all right. So you will not have to answer anything anymore. I told not. No, actually, because if I give you an questions to answer here, or like FPs 1, 2, and 3 for this discussion, you'll find that those will be the same items in the ST. I'll be asking the same information in the ST. For your ST, by the way, you'll study. I'd like to request you, you study very well the PowerPoint presentation, especially with the details of those notable philosophers, and also the ones that you could find in the module. Let that be a combination of those information. 
No, the ST, I'm referring to the ST. And also, of course, you'll see this discussion, you'll see this content in your, you'll need this content in your major exam, quarterly exam. No, not quarterly exam, but in your exam next month for the prelims. Next month is September. The month next to August is September. And September is the first month of your exams. Prelims. You'll have your prelims next month. Prelims, that's one of the four exams that you take in the first semester. So in a school year, Mark, you have a total. Now that you're in senior high, in one school year, you have eight major exams. For every, for every semester, you'll have four. Four in the first semester and four in the second semester. Yes. Welcome to senior high. But again, Mark, that's senior high. Welcome to senior high. We cannot complain anymore because whether we like it or not, that's senior high. We understand that you feel like that would be many in one semester, but then the truth of the matter remains that that's senior high. Here's the thing, now that you're in IA, that's the practice here. By the way, before we go into that, questions regarding the lesson, do, doing philosophy. Anything else? For a while, for a while, Mark, for a while. Uh, before I entertain your concern, before I entertain your concern, let's focus first on this lesson. Anything, any question regarding the lesson on doing philosophy, lesson one in philo? I'll address that concern later on, Mark. Intro to philo? No, do, lesson one, doing philosophy? There's none? If there's none, I'll end the recording. <laughs>